in a minute, we are going to be joined by CM Punk, uh, joining us from Chicago. And I wonder what the mood is like in Chicago this afternoon. I was going to say this morning, but it is this afternoon now. Of course, their beloved Cubbies are down two games to none against Chris Weidman's Mets. And don't worry, I didn't get to this on the show, but uh, Weidman, I mean, if you call me a bandwagoner for the uh, the Blue Jays, Weidman is way worse. I mean, this guy hasn't watched a baseball game in at least 15 years, and all of a sudden he's tweeting about Daniel Murphy and the New York Mets. CM Punk, not a bandwagoner. He's been, uh, he's been driving that train for a very long time. So let me ask him directly, uh, Mr. Punk, what is the mood like this afternoon in Chicago as the beloved Cubbies are down two games to none? Oh, I'm the, I'm the biggest bandwagoner fan there is. <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no visual audio or, or any other kind of history that depicts me being a fan of either the Blackhawks or the Chicago Cubs anywhere. At least that's what I read on the internet, so it must be true. What is going on with uh, you and the internet, by the way? Can we just address this? What is happening here? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I'm just I'm minding my own business. I got some fake ice for my fake uh, shoulder injury right now. My dog is trying to eat a cookie that he's not allowed to have, and life is good. Um, I, we will get to that in a second, but I thought I had it bad. And then you, you like retweet one thing or say one mention, and I get... I mean, the worst kinds of humans pop up on my on my yeah. timeline. I'm like, where, where are these people coming? Oh, that's right. You just uh, retweeted something or mentioned me. How do you stomach it? Well, what's the point? Uh, I, well, the, the, you stomach it by not reading it. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, that's what you do. Uh, you know, otherwise you'll just go fucking insane. It's a, it's a cesspool of humanity, you know? Do you even read your mentions anymore? No. No, I do. I do occasionally. Um, always, always confused. I, I, I think, I think it lies in with uh, the confusion of I don't understand the the idea of saying something nasty to me, getting getting called out for a personal attack, and then me defending myself, and then it somehow. I mean, I, I guess everybody wants to be Twitter famous. So, like, you know, I, I've, I've played into their hands and I've given them their five minutes of Twitter fame, and I guess that's what they were looking for. Um, sometimes I, I don't do it. Sometimes I do. You know, I, I don't lose sleep over it either way. Yeah, it is a crazy thing. You just Google your name, and like the top articles are about your Twitter uh, activity. It's a, it's a bizarre thing. Strange, right? Yeah, it must be a slow news day. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about you. You mentioned the shoulder uh, around yeah. eleven days or so. ESPN reported after speaking to Duke Rufus, your coach, that you had suffered a shoulder injury. We have not heard from you. So, what's the status of this injury? Uh, well, I dodged a bullet. The doctor on the MRI said that nothing was torn. Um, we were originally concerned that it was labrum or rotator cuff, and that's not the case. Um, I, I, I might have slightly tore something. Unfortunately, MRIs aren't 100% conclusive, is what the doctor says to me, which is probably the worst thing you can say to me, because now I'm all fucking paranoid that something is torn and this isn't getting any better, because it's, it's been really, really frustrating, but I, I take it day to day i find other stuff to do with my time and uh i bust my ass and try to get back to 100 percent so i can continue training how long ago did it happen uh august like end of august oh wow so it's been quite some time yeah. is it feeling better uh it's it's exponentially better from uh you know when i did it yeah um i'm still i'm still dealing with some pain my, my range of motion uh, is back um, once it's warmed up and working. Uh, my strength, I wouldn't say, is 100% back, but it's uh, it's getting there. Yeah, it's 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 a ton better than what it was. What led to the injury? Uh, I was sparring. Uh, we were on the ground. Um, guy had his hooks had my back, and I, I ditched his uh, his his right hook, and I turned to get on top, and I had all my weight on my elbow on the mat, and things just popped. It was like one of those pops where like everybody in the room just kind of stops and looks. Oh you know? man! Yeah, that was, yeah, that was me. So, uh, but I finished the round. I sparred another round after that, and then finished the workout, uh, and then mopped the floors like I always do. Because I, I, I honestly, in my gut, I was like, ah, that, that didn't sound good. This is gonna, this is gonna need a surgery. And then I got pretty depressed, waiting for the MRI. And uh, thankfully, the MRI said that nothing was torn. So it's just one of those things, you know. It's just, uh, just another hurdle. That's the way I look at it. Uh, when you say you got pretty depressed, I mean, did it make you reconsider 
this whole venture, this, this, this whole thing that you're on, this ride, this journey that you're on to get to your UFC fight? Uh, no, but when you want to do something and you want to do it badly, um, you know, so bad you can, you can taste it, so to speak that, you know, anything that, that kind of prevents you from, from being able to do it. Like I, I'd be fine if I could train, if I could do something, you know, uh, but, but just kind of sitting around waiting for that MRI that week was, was pretty miserable. You know, uh, I mean, riding a bike hurt, you know what I mean? Um, jumping rope hurt, but it's, it's, it's a lot better now. I bike a lot. So are you in Milwaukee? Like, are you still going to the gym while, you know, I know you can't use that part of your body, but are you still around the team or are you taking a break from that? No, I, uh, I, I came home. I've been sitting in Chicago. Okay. That's a bummer. It is a bummer. Uh, the whole you, thing's a bummer. You, you, uh, you know, you always said that you were ready whenever you're going to leave it up to your coaches and Duke has implied that, you know, he wants a year at least with you to, to get you ready for whenever your debut will be. Do you have any idea if this significantly delays things for you? Uh, no, that's a question you're going to have to ask Duke. You know, I'm the one that ran my mouth and was like, Oh, I, I hope I fight by the end of the year, you know, and obviously everybody twists and, <laughs> and contorts everything that you say. And, uh, for some reason, a lot of people thought that meant that I was fighting by the end of the year. No, it's just, I'm, I'm an ambitious fellow, you know, uh, I don't know if, if that delays me. Um, there, there's just another question for Duke. It, it's. I think it's going to be a matter of when it when it lines up best for uh, for the UFC and for my timeline. But uh, we'll find out in January, hopefully. Maybe we can get like an estimation. As far as how comfortable he feels with with you making your debut, right now, you're you're assuming or you're ex expecting that the shoulder will be back to normal by January, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, I was actually, I was actually going to go back up and, uh, start training this week, but I, I just, I'm still dealing with so much pain in the damn thing that like now I'm paranoid that I'm going to start back too early and, yeah. and re-injure it. And that's the last thing I want to do. So I'm, I'm really trying to be level headed about it. Um, you know, not just full steam ahead working through injuries is kind of a new thing for me. So, uh, I have to, I have to cool my jets a little bit. Uh, in a perfect world, uh, do you, do you, do you kind of wish that there was never the announcement and that you could have just been training, people leave you alone, and then when you were ready to fight, then make the announcement and then go into like a real camp for a fight and then fight three, four months later? Would you have done it the opposite in a way? Uh, yes, in some days I wish that, but it also wasn't my call, you know what I mean? Right. Like, uh, I wasn't the one that called them, they called me. Uh, I suggested... Hey, why don't we wait until we're ready to fight? And they're just like, no, fuck it. We're going to, we're going to do it right now. And I said, all right. Like, uh, I, some days are, are better than others, you know, mentally for me. And I think, man, yeah, it would, it would have been better if we waited, uh, other days. I, I don't think about it. Do you wish this news never came out? What the shoulder injury? Yeah. Were you trying to keep it? Yeah. 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 I was, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like talking, uh, or, or, you know, whatever happens in, in the gym stays in the gym. I don't like talking about it. Did you, did you tell Duke that? Yeah, we talked. Um, I mean, be, and, and it's, it's mostly because, you know, I, I, I deal with enough shit. The last thing I need is, sure. you know, some, some phony journalist being like, Oh, he's fake injured. He's never going to fight. It's like, fuck off, pal. You know, like who told you it was okay to, to, to write a book? Who made you a journalist? Like, I don't know why people are so concerned about what the fuck I'm doing. You know, if you don't, if you don't like a book somebody wrote, don't read it. If you don't like a TV show somebody's on, don't watch it. I mean, if you're mad that somebody's remaking Big Trouble in Little China and it's your favorite movie, guess what? Don't watch the remake. Right. You don't want to watch me fight? Don't watch me fight. It's, it's, it's a funny thing because in July when we spoke uh, in Chicago, it felt like, all right, we were kind of at the halfway point. People were rooting for you and things like that. And now slowly and it's a very very vocal minority so i don't want to put too much stock into them but it's like almost people are now doubting whether or not it and we've always said or at least i've always heard from duke in particular that it was going to be at least a year before you know he really said okay let's go why do you think all of a sudden it feels like people are starting to doubt whether or not you you had any intention of fighting uh well i mean uh, you know we we made the announcement what 10 months ago yeah you know, obviously i i, I, sh I should have fought by now you know uh I think it has a lot to do with um, 
impulsive people. They have uh, short attention spans. Uh, you know, it's nice. That means they want to see you fight. You know, as much as they 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 pretend that oh, this is this is terrible for the sport and we hate him and we're not going to support it. They're going to watch it, and they want to watch it. And that's the that's the funny thing about it is it's like we got them. You know. Uh, and they can say it's a PR stunt, and they can say whatever, but I know I'm a, oh, hang on one second. No problem. Sorry, that was my uh, my timer on my phone for my ice. I don't know oh. if you heard that or not. Did you I, I did not. No, I did not. I thought it was your dog. Oh, okay, never mind. Trying to... Uh... No, it started started buzzing and freaking out. Um, you know, uh, I know I'm going to get my day in the octagon, and I'm going to have fun doing it. So uh, I just tried to... I just try to ignore all the silliness, you know. Some days it gets to me, and I don't ignore it. And then I remember, oh, yeah, that's why you do ignore it, because, you know, you you fed the troll. Don't feed the troll, Phil. And, and then I, I get back out with my life. Uh, have you heard from the UFC? Do they check in on you, or do they just leave you alone at this point? Uh, well, I, I kind of assumed it right from the beginning, um, because, you know, uh, doctors and and, and MRIs were involved that, uh, that Dana Lorenzo knew, but apparently they didn't. Uh, once, once Duke did the interview, uh, I got a call from Dana and Lorenzo and they were just concerned. They were just like, Hey man, are you okay? What's, what's, what's going on? How's everybody? How's the family? How's yeah. Larry? <laughs> uh, you know, did they really ask how's Larry? Phone phone. Yeah, absolutely. That's everybody amazing. loves Larry. Of course. You'll appreciate by the way, uh, the picture of you that we have saying that you're on the phone is you and Larry. So I thought that was important. Did we lose you? I think we did. Maybe it was Larry once again. Remember when I was in uh, Chicago interviewing uh, Punk in, uh, in July, Larry was jumping all over me. It was great. I was very sweaty that day, and he was licking my feet. It was more my, my arms, actually, he was licking, if I, if I recall. He was, he was the unintentional star of that sit-down interview uh, with CM Punk. But look, I mean... I don't know how many times it is. It is true. If you go back and look at all the interviews, uh, you never said. Are, are you there? Did we lose you? I'm back. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, so what, what did they say? So did they say like come? Oh, uh, anyway, I wanted to tell you that the picture that we have on the screen saying that you're on the phone is you and the often imitated, never duplicated Larry there. So I thought you would appreciate that. Oh, lovely, lovely. Did they say they want you to come to Vegas or to check you out, or are they confident that you're doing everything that you need to do? No, I, I explained to them the situation. They said, man, that really sucks. You know, get better soon, but take time. You know, go at your own pace, and uh, I am, I'm doing that. Are you going stir-crazy at this point? I am and I'm not, you know, like I said, I, I, I bike a lot. I, I told myself I was going to try to do, uh, 20 miles a day in October and, uh, I missed a couple of days, but I also hit a couple of 30 mile days. So, oh. uh, I do that and my shoulders good enough that once I'm like warmed up and stretched out that, uh, I jump a lot of rope. Um, I'm, I'm just nervous about, uh, like the grappling. I'm pretty sure I think maybe striking might be okay. I'm going to start kind of light hitting a heavy bag here in a couple of days, see how I feel. Uh, I just, I just don't want to throw any more wrenches in the plans. You know, I just don't want to re-injure it or further injure it. Uh, I think I, I, I'm pretty fortunate dodging a bullet, uh, shoulder surgery really sucks from what I understand. And I've never had shoulder problems before. So it's just been, it's just been frustrating. So you said that you, you suffered the injury around August, um, up until that point, were you happy with your progression? Dude, let me tell you, uh, I, you know, obviously nobody's going to believe me if I say I'm Anderson Silva and obviously that would be a <laughs> fucking lie anyway. Sure. Um, but I was, I was having a great day that Monday, you know, sparring, uh, I felt good. Um, you know, and then, then this happened. It's kind of the most frustrating thing about it. You know, uh, I felt like I was turning the corner a little bit in certain aspects and, you know, uh, I, I definitely don't think I was overtraining or anything like that. I mean, I trained a lot, but this is just, it was just a freak accident, you know? Did they, uh, again, before the injury, were there any talks yet about when the debut might come? Nope. No, nope. Duke is, uh, is very adamant about, uh, not discussing that. Okay. And he's, he's dead set on being with him for 12 months before he even entertains the idea. I wonder, and again, and, I, you know, he's, he's ahead. a responsible coach, you know sure. what I mean? I wonder if now it's like these months don't count and it's now, you know, in, in a real timeline, 
14 months. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, if you, if you look at it like that, like say I was with Duke for a year and then he was like, okay, you're good to go and say I was going to fight in February. And now what I fight in March or April, like who the fuck's upset about that? (laughs) It's the same people who said they didn't want to see any fight in the first place. So shut the fuck up. Like don't watch it. Don't pay attention to me. Don't follow me on Twitter. I don't know why they torture themselves. I'm, I'm, I'm such a heathen in their eyes. Like, then don't associate with me. Don't write articles about me. Don't talk to me about you. you know, uh, don't just leave me alone. Sure, leave me alone. Why do I get the feeling that they will watch and and write articles and things like that? It's it's of a- course <laughs> they will. Of course they will. That's and that's my whole point. You know, the same people who complained that I was going to come on here. Uh, oh, what's he going to talk about? There's nothing to talk about. All right, but these are the same people who have asked me 6,000 times to be on their podcast, and I decline because I don't want to be on their podcast. When you're a friend of mine, he asked me to come on. Obviously, let's chat. And there's plenty to talk about. Cubs, Blue Jays, Blackhawks, my shitty shoulder, Larry, <laughs> you know, everything. Uh, we talk about everything. By the way, when you, when you uh, announced that you were going to fight, you received... Uh, messages and invitations from all kinds of people. When this news came out uh, about the injury, did anyone reach out to you and say, I've, I've dealt with the same thing, this is what you do, anyone from the team? Has anyone really gone above and beyond for you? I mean, everybody on the team, you know, yeah. like there was a lot of people that didn't know, and then they, they would text me like maybe four four weeks later and be like, where are you? <laughs> you know, I'd be like, oh, you didn't know I was hurt. <laughs> you know, but guy like Eric, like Eric Koch, he was just dealing with the same thing. He had a knee problem. He had to pull out of a fight in July in Chicago, and you know, he just got back to training. I think he's already got a fight in January. So yeah, like they're, they're, they're super, super helpful keeping me, you know, mentally, uh, happy and, and focused on the, the task at hand. And they just want to see me back in the gym as soon as possible. Are, are you happy with the, the, the decision to be in Milwaukee and go to Rufus? That's all staying the same whenever you come back. Yes. Yes. Obviously I'm, I'm happy there. I'm, I'm still happy there. You know, uh, I mean, I, I, I've made friends there, you know what I mean? Um, last UFC pay-per-view, I had, I had Ben Askren and his wife sitting on my couch, you know, with their newborn, little Larry. Little Larry's so scared of their baby. It was, it was hilarious. <laughs> the, the dog is scared of the baby? He was, he was, like, so curious, and he would, like, try to creep towards her to, like, sniff her, and then once we spotted that he was doing it, he would kind of, like, he would, he would back up. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do with the, the human baby. Wow. And I was... I was terrified he was going to, you know, rip her throat or something like that. But no, he was, he was nice. I always there feel like you nice. have a, a thousand things going. You're, you're writing comic books, things, anything outside of this fighting world that I may not be as in tune with that you got going on these days. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to stop writing comic books because there was, there was a bunch of people that, uh, that what? got mad that I was writing comic books. No, I'm, I'm fucking with you. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, you know, I'm just being sarcastic. Now, uh, comic book writing is going super, super well. Uh, I lost my computer over the weekend, but then uh, I just found it. The TSA oh. has it at the airport. Yeah, so I gotta. That's another thing I gotta do today. I'm a busy guy. That's exciting. Did they look through your stuff? Yeah. What I, do you think? I don't know. The only thing I use my computer for is writing comic books. So if if they went through it, then they know what happens in Drax issue three. You know, <laughs> it's it's not a big deal. Okay. I would like to think that maybe somebody went through and was like, sweet, we're going to see something, you know, and then they, yeah, it's just boring comic book shit, you know. So you're doing the comic books, anything else? I feel like people are always tugging at you. Um, yeah, uh, well, let's see what else, what else is, are people mad about that I'm doing? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, I'm doing a, I'm doing a movie, I'm doing a movie with my wife. Oh. Uh, a lot of a lot of armchair uh, coaches and fighters uh, on the internet uh, who like to fancy themselves journalists, uh, but never went to school for it. Um, said, "Oh, that's not a wise decision." Uh, listen, a, a three-day shoot to get paid uh, a ridiculous amount of money uh, isn't isn't going to hurt my fight career. Uh, and I got to pay the bills. You know, I hate money, but it keeps the lights on. So um, I got to do something because I think a lot of people also don't think these, these MMA experts also don't realize that I don't get paid unless I fight. Yeah. So uh, why why the hell wouldn't I fight um, so I can get paid? Uh, I'm doing that. I think I'm um, more terrified that my wife has to do some sort of sword fighting training. Whoa. Uh, what kind of movie is this? You want? 
Um, it's like a post-apocalyptic uh, horror, horror movie, like you know, but not no zombies. The zombies is the zombie things getting out of hand. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my wife's my uh, my wife's gonna learn how to sword fight. So so, are you playing husband and wife in the film as well? No, no. I, I'm pretty sure she's uh, the Laura Croft esque badass, and I'm the I'm the bad guy that pretty much brings the monsters to these poor helpless people. I could see it now. Troll Hunter starring CM Punk and his Dude, wife. Troll Hunter is a great movie. Have you ever seen that? No, it's actually it's a real movie. Troll Hunter, yeah, it's a great movie. It's like a, the, the, was it made in Sweden, maybe. Oh, man. It's, a, it's fantastic. Stole movie. my idea. Yeah, check it out. It's a, it's a great movie. Your, your wife is doing a lot of acting. I, I saw her on a, a Madden, uh, the, the weirdest, I don't even know what to call it. It was like a mini movie, but a commercial. It was the weirdest thing in the world with dinosaurs and all kinds of crazy I thought things. That, I thought that commercial was great. She it was great. In, didn't she? I'm not saying it was yeah. bad. It was just, it was a bit off the beaten path, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, but man, you know what? All the commercial actors, like she's been getting a lot of grief from commercial actors because they were like, you've never done a commercial before. How dare you? You're not allowed to do commercials. It, oh, it got God. hairy for a while. Really? What is this? I, I feel like we need to just, <laughs> we need to take a break from all of this. Why? Why subject yourself to this? It bothers me. <laughs> man, oh, are, you, you are, you, are you messing yeah. with me now again? Yes. Oh. Yes, I am. You're too naive. I guess I am. You're too naive. Oh, gosh. Um, it was just, it was an onslaught this morning. I was like, what is going on? Why is this happening? Why yeah. is there so much hatred out there? Yeah, tough guys. They, uh, I mean, they know where I train. They can, they can show up. Yes. Um, but what's going on with the Blue Jays, man? Well, no, I, hey, listen, don't turn the tables on me. I want to talk to you. The most recent thing, <laughs> the, the most recent thing is that your beloved Cubs, you dodged the question at the top, are down Two games to none going home. So much like my Jays, who play tonight, by the way, uh, and, and I expect them to win. But what's going on? I mean, I feel like at least the Jays were winning in game two. The Cubs have really not shown up thus far. Is it all going to their head? What's happening? No, I don't think it's going to their head. I think the Mets are just a super fantastic team. You know, uh, I, I feel like it's unfortunate that uh, so many great teams are already, already out. You know, uh, Cubs in any other division would have won their division. Uh, they beat the Pirates in a in a wild card, great game. Uh, they beat the Cardinals, who had the best record in baseball. Um, so, I mean, saying the Cubs suck is a little bit ridiculous. You no, know? I didn't say. That. And I didn't you, say that. You, no, 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 no. I'm I'm just saying in general. Okay. You know? Like I, I'll I'll never I'll never just be like, well, the Mets suck. You know what I mean? Like, no, I, I'm pretty sure if you made it this far, if you made it to either the championship series, you're a good team. You know, and Mets have that deep pitching, you know, and that's that's gotten out of them. That's gotten them out of some jams. And, uh, and obviously, the Murphy, Mur what, I mean, Murphy's a stud, you know. Uh, instead of saying, oh, Arietta screwed up and hit a home run uh, and threw a home run pitch to Murphy, I, I'm just like, man, Murphy's hit home runs and, and bombs off of him, Granky, uh, uh, Kershaw, mm. like the best pitchers in major leagues, you know, and like, you know, I, I mean, the Mets are the Mets are going to let that guy go, and that's mind-boggling to me. Well, I, I feel like he's he's playing into an amazing contract. But um, what I'm wondering is now, I'm assuming you're going to be at Game Three, right? Yes. Um, all throughout Game Two yesterday, they kept showing Jerry Seinfeld in the stands, which is a little weird. I feel like Seinfeld is not that kind of guy. Are we going to get some CM Punk cutaways? On TBS, I, I I doubt it. I don't got Seinfeld money. Are you kidding me? Where do you sit? What, what do you mean? No, I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, I, I got, I got good seats. Uh, I just don't. I mean, do you sit in a box or TBS? We, TV, TBS? No, I don't sit in the box. I sit with the people. I sit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I sit in a box. Hide from everybody. It probably would be a good idea. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, I feel like uh, they have good luck when you sing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." Have they asked you to do it? The playoffs. No, I just did it. I just did it to uh, one of the one of the last games uh, against the Pirates of the uh, right the season. So uh, I I doubt it. Um, I'm I, I would like to think Eddie Vedder is probably going to sing, but I also I also like the when they do the video board stuff and you get to see Ernie Banks and Harry Carey sing. I think that uh, that's really awesome. Uh, actually, a good question. Um, they they do. Uh, was it God Bless America? Yes. 
Is is that God? I hope they don't do that at Wrigley. That's really gonna suck. Oh, and so, nah, you can't mess with. Uh, I wonder back in the day, like with with Bartman and stuff, when they were in the L- LCS, what did they do? Because they've been doing the God. They me, they say, take me out to the ball game. But yeah, I, I, got I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's a national broadcast, so I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Even more interesting, what will they do tonight in Toronto? Uh, sing God Bless America. God, would that be they, great? They How awesome sing, would that be? They ain't singing that in the Great White North. It'd be, it'd be fantastic. <laughs> it would be hilarious. That, it? <laughs> it would be it hilarious. Would be hilarious. Um, you've been around for a Bulls championship and a Blackhawks championship. Bears made the uh, the Super Bowl but didn't win. Would 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 the Cubs winning be greater than all of that? As far as the, the uh, reaction and all that, or, or, or are we overplaying You know, it? the way I always feel about it, I always feel like there's Cubs fans and then there's Wrigley fans. And uh, I think to understand that, you have to know about the area. And there are people who, they don't care about the Cubs. They don't care about baseball. They, they go out socialize and they go out as an excuse to get drunk. And I feel like those would be the same people that would use the Cubs winning anything as an excuse to, like, commit some sort of horrible property damage, you know? So it's a, it's a mixed bag. I kind of worry for the city, oh. uh, when, when the, the Cubs do win the world series, but, uh, they, they had it pretty much on lockdown when they, when they beat the Cardinals, uh, there was cops on ATVs, cops on horseback. There was, like, they, they, they took care of things pretty well. Cause I mean, everybody gets drunk at the game and then filters out and then goes to bars. So it can get pretty hairy, but they, uh, they took, uh, they took care of it. Uh, last thing, I'm not worried about your shoulder. I'm not worried about whether or not you're going to make your, your UFC debut. I'm confident in all of that. I'm confident the Cubs are going to win at least a couple of games and make this a series. I, I am worried, though, about the uh, the basement-dwelling Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, what is going on here? Three and three just— Basement-dwelling? Well, pretty much. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, hey, listen, listen. <laughs> this, this is a team that has played the most hockey— over the past five years over any other team coming in uh, a distant second would be the L.A. Kings. These guys are probably grizzled, you know. Um, I think they took a little bit extra time off before their their uh, training camp started this year, so they're tired. They haven't got their legs under them yet. And plus, you know, a lot of guys got shuffled out and new guys got shuffled in. So there's still guys trying to carve their way onto the roster. we got a bunch of young uh uh, Russians on the team now. Um, I don't even think Panarin speaks English, which is pretty funny. Speaks hockey though. He's mm. doing awesome so far. So, uh, it's, it's way too early in the season to, to worry. Um, you know, it's, it's hockey. We got like, uh, 70, uh, 77, 75 more games to play. Something like that. Sounds like a lot of excuses to me. I don't know. It's just because, uh, I mean, well, I, I got to be honest. The, let's see how the Royals do tonight before we talk about <laughs> Well, it's just weird because I look yeah. up at the top, you know, 6-0, and best start in franchise history, greatest franchise in the history of sports, Montreal Canadiens. I mean, I, I just see them all the way up there, and then I see you guys all the way at the bottom. It's weird. It's just weird. It's jarring. That's all. It's not, it's not where you start. It's where you finish. <laughs> and the Hawks have a dynasty. What are the, what are the Canadians got? You guys still searching for that? Uh, Drive for 25, least, baby. What, 25. Yeah, you're still you're still searching for that 25. Yeah, that's right. Is uh is uh is Subban and Price going to be able to do it for you? Looks good so far. Did you guys add any offense in the off season? Listen, like who's, who's scoring goals? We're doing fine so far. 20 goals for, seven goals against. That's not bad. When when you yeah, got and and until 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 Kreider bumps into Price again and, oh, he, stop and then he can't play in the playoffs. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I think it's a nice way to, to wrap this up. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And I think that's the lesson of the Absolutely. day. Absolutely. That is the lesson 100%. of the day. 100%. Uh, I wish you the best, my friend. Uh, I, I, I obviously expect that uh, shoulder to, uh, to heal up soon and looking forward to you getting back on that horse. And eventually, of course, that debut, I will not wish you the best of luck, though, because I know you don't need it. Um, but uh, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it greatly. It means a lot to us. I appreciate you clearing the air. And... Uh, uh, the you know the the physical therapy all that stuff just a bit of a bump in the road and looking forward to you uh, getting back in the gym and and doing what you set out to do. As am I, my friend Mazel tov. Thank you. I hope we made some people mad. Yes, thank you. There he is, CM Punk stopping by from Chicago. Um, hopefully that cleared some of the air again. I don't understand the uh, the criticism. It's it's a bizarre thing. 
and uh, and I wish people would revert back to our, our original interviews and just see. I mean, this is a guy who never, you know, he was called to do this, and for some reason he's getting the the criticism. And look, he's they've said it from the beginning. He wasn't going to fight in September, October, January was when they would start considering it. So where that criticism comes from is bizarre. But again, I think it is a vocal minority and uh, not important for someone in his position to focus on that.